just kept, kept playing. I was going to keep screaming. That's all I know. Oh, I tell you what. Greg could make elevator CDs. You know, he makes CDs for elevators. He plays the best. Y'all go ahead and have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Hallelujah. My goodness gracious. Thank you, Lord. Man, it's good to see you. Y'all look good. Even though I saw y'all on Sunday, y'all look better today. Praise God. Every day with Jesus, you look better. I'm going to tell you right now, every day you're with Jesus, you look better. There's nobody that can take that away from you. You look amazing. I'm not talking about not only your physical appearance, your spiritual aura. You look amazing. There's nothing or nobody that can take that away from you because the blood of Jesus resides in you. You look so good. My goodness gracious. So I'm sitting there, I was thinking about that. I go outside to go to the bathroom, and then I go to get a sip of water, which defeated the purpose of going to the bathroom. Anyway, and I see Ashley's picture, and the difference in your countenance is unbelievable. That's what God does to you. I'm going to tell you what, there's some of y'all that came in here busted, boy. Y'all look good now. Y'all look good. Just be praise Jesus for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This word tonight. Oh, wait. Let's wait. We'll get to there. Whew. My God, how are y'all? Y'all okay? I'm great. Acts 17, 28, please. Acts 17. Well, we're going to start at verse 24. Praise the Lord. Jesus is so good. That's the name we're going to be praising tonight. I have to take my watch off. I'm going to go flying across the room. Acts 17, 24 through 28. Y'all ready? God who made the whole world, or the, the world, excuse me, and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with man's hand, men's hands as though he needed anything. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Lord. So the God we serve needs nothing. Why should we? Why should we need anything if we have him? Since he gives us to all life, breath in all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Here he is. For in him we live, in him we move, and have our being. As also some of you and your own poets have said, we are also his offspring. What I like about this was he met the people where they were at. If you don't believe this, well, listen to that. For we are also his offspring, right? Do you see that? He met the people where they were at. But in him we live, we move, and we have our being. We can't do nothing without Jesus. The title of this is called, I Need Jesus. I Need Jesus. This might step on a few toes. If it, well, I'll, I'll do it specific. Maybe 40 toes, maybe 60 toes. About four or six of y'all out there. I'm not just kidding. <laughs> not really. <laughs> All right. I Need Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the name of Jesus. We exalt your name, Lord, and we praise you for you have saved us from everything that we have put our own selves in. Father, you have saved us from the things that were against us, and you will always hold us dear to your heart. We love you for if you don't need anything, and us in you, we will not need anything. You are the most high God, and we love you, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Let this word fall on good ground, fertile, ready to go. 
We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We don't take it lightly. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Don. Man, let me tell you something. Pastor Ralph, Miss Diane, everybody. Ben, Pastor Ben, sorry. Pastor Elliot, Pastor Grayson. You know what I'm saying? What is that, baby? Yeah, yes, sir. When we went up there and we got anointed, it was something that came upon us that nobody can take away. I'm going to tell you this right now, man. We've been blowing up everybody's phones since that day. We got a group text, and we're sending paragraphs, essays of stuff. I'm telling you, man. And the thing is, we're all on the same page in one accord, and we're taking it over one step at a time. It feels so good to know that we are equally yoked, and there is no burden on the walk that we have with Jesus. It's so good. Look, when we got anointed, right, I asked Pastor Tone, I was like, hey, Pastor Tone, you guys going to put oil on our heads like Apostle Louie did? And he goes, we straight up, he goes, no, we're not going to do it all like that. I looked at him, I said, you know, it's not sell some blue, it'll sell some Lou up there. You don't know all that oil on your head. Apostle Louie, man, he, he put, he, he anointed them. He anointed them, boy. But I went, went so let me tell you why well, I'm telling you this, right? When he anointed them, you could actually see the transference from the Holy Spirit into their life. You can. When we were up there, I can honestly tell you I couldn't see anything out here. I couldn't see anything out here. And it wasn't because I didn't want to. It's just I couldn't. It was a different place for me. And for me to come from where I came from and anointed as a minister... In the, in, the, in the ministry is unbelievable. It's amazing for y'all. It's amazing for y'all. It's amazing for you, Mr. Cooper, Miss Cooper, Jennifer. Hi, baby. I love you. I, I want to thank my wife, my kids on, on YouTube. If they're watching, my mother-in-law watching the kids, I'm praying for you. <laughs> they are good kids. They are good kids. They are good kids, you know. <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> Listen, man. It's okay. I know how I was when I was young. They're my kids. It's all right. Praise the Lord. They're amazing kids. Let me tell you, what did, what did Aubrey say to us that day in the car? She said, she was like, I want to I wanna punch God or punch the evil spirit. Oh. No, not punch God, babe. I want to punch God's enemy. We punch God's enemy with praise and worship. I must be doing something right. She learned that in the big class with Miss Mata and Pastor Cecil. Y'all out there, I'll hear me out there. Okay, great. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm just in a good mood. I'm in a great mood. Let me tell you something. I was I, like, I can't, I can't express this enough. I was living in a horrible place in my life. Like every single day I was poisoning myself to where I wanted to kill myself. You guys know that? Like it was that bad. We were trying to kill ourselves. But right now I'm able to give you the word of life. Oh my goodness gracious, thank you Lord. Thank you Lord for seeing me fit. Thank you Lord for seeing me fit. I don't take this lightly. I might be up here joking. It's because you put that joy in my heart, Lord. But I'm serious when it's about you, Lord. I'm going to exalt the name of Jesus. And that's why this word is called, I need Jesus. I don't need nothing else. I just need Jesus. I need the man of God in my life to point me in the way of Jesus. I need the woman in my life to be helping me when I need to find him more. I'm being honest with you now. I need Jesus. I can't do it on my own. This is going to be a little rough tonight. I'm going to be a little loud tonight. Part one is, for in him we live. In him we live. I'm going to break it down into three parts. It's we live. Number two is we move. Number three is we have our being. But number one is, for in him we live. 
Without him, we are lifeless. Without him, we are lifeless. I remember walking around the hood, zombie. Lifeless. Had nothing. Just sitting here like this. Tripping out of my mind, not knowing what's going to happen next. Scared for my life, but didn't care about it. I was lifeless. I didn't have a Jesus in me. I didn't have a purpose in me. I didn't have a thought in me of love in my heart. In him, we live. It's in Jesus we live. In him, I have life. And it says in his word, I have life and life what? More abundantly in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Without him, we're purposeless. Let me say it like this. You guys can, I'm going to say it slower. Without him, we are purposeless. Without him is a life without purposeless, without purpose, excuse me. So we are purposeless and our life is without purpose. So there's double whammy without him. So it's our life and even ourselves. We have no direction. We have nowhere to go. We have nowhere to plant our feet. There is no solid ground when you can't even see Jesus. It doesn't exist when Jesus doesn't exist in your life. I needed him. I need Jesus. 24-7, 365. Does it call for this? Yes. Yes, it does. If I went hard for heroin and cocaine, I'm going to go hard for Jesus. If I'm going to steal money from my mom for, for, for dope, trust me, I'm going to take all the time in the world to spend with Jesus. I used to take stuff from my mom, man. She wouldn't even let me in my house when I was released from prison. The first night I was out of prison, she didn't let me in. What? You know what I mean? That was painful. And so she goes, you're going to have to spend the night with your aunts and uncles. I said, okay. But in, inside, I was hurt. But I didn't want to bring any more burdens on top of her because I had already caused enough. So I said, okay. That was the first submission that I had to anybody in authority in my life. And that was the start. And it was there. I was like, you know what? She came over to their house and spent time with us. That was a breakthrough for me. You're not going to come here, but you know what? I am going to come see you. Saturday, I was here. I was released on February 7th. I was here February 8th. <laughs> the first day, I see Raphael. He's all tatted up. And he goes, he goes like this, so are you guys going to pay the tuition? I said, I just looked at my uncle. I said, in Arabic, no. We'll wait until Monday. And then my uncle goes, wait for money order. I said, okay, we get money order. He can't take that. I go, all right. So, so this is why I'm saying this, right? From that moment on, I saw somebody that was actually there to help me the whole entire time, which is Raphael, right? And every time I went to go talk to him, the complete polar opposite of what I was thinking was being transferred to me. Okay, so here I'm going with this like this. When I started to talk to him, he would say, hey, man, you need to get your mouth right. I said, what? He goes, you need to get your mouth right. I said, okay. I said, what did I do wrong? He said, the way you're talking to people is not right. And I said, who is this guy? He's like this gangster. You should be talking gangster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is what I'm seeing, right? But the thing is, though, it was Jesus that I saw, and I couldn't recognize him. So the more that I got to know Jesus, the more that I got to see the Jesus in everybody in this place. So I'm telling you this. If I didn't have him, I couldn't have seen him. If I did not have him, I cannot witness him. If you don't know Jesus then you don't know anybody sitting next to you. I love these two right here. Well, you thought me and Elliot were bad. Nikki and Jennifer, boy. They get bad. 
So without him, we are lost. It's in him we live. It's in him we have a purpose. Set out to live a life of Christ full of purpose. Now, quick question. I know some people know the answer here. Don't answer it. When you look at salt and pepper, what do you see? You see, if people already just said it. I told them not to say it. They are. You see seasonings. You don't see color. Let me say that again. You don't see color. You see seasoning. You see the reason why they're here. You don't see a skin color. You don't see a color. You see a purpose. If you still see a color, check your heart. Check your heart. It's not black and white. They're seasonings. They are used to enhance the flavor of the food it's sprinkled on. Thank you. I don't have some up here already. Yeah. I need more. Thank you, Elliot, very much. So here, they are seasonings that enhance the flavor of the food they have been sprinkled on. They are not black and white. See, God doesn't see black and white. He sees sons and daughters of the Most High God because he, he sees Jesus in you. I'm so tired of all of the stuff about race and this and that. If we are sons and daughters of God, then I am not a white man or a brown man or a black man that worships Jesus. I am a son or a man of God that worships Jesus. I have a purpose. I don't have a color. I have a purpose. All this labeling needs to get out the door. We're so focused with the label that we lose focus of who Jesus is. I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of the pandering. I'm so tired of the reaching out to things that aren't even real because they're non-existent in the kingdom. If we are kingdom subjects, those things do not exist in our lives. That's who I need. All the time, I need Jesus, and that's it. I got my brother, Pastor Tony Samuels, who is a man of God. I got Pastor Ralph Stinson, who is a man of God. I got Pastor Elliot Cook, who is a man of God. I got Minister Philip Cooper, who is a man of God. I don't see nothing but men of God. That's it. I don't see white, black, brown, white. I don't see that. You can't see that. And if you see that, then that has become a roadblock to the vision that you have in Christ Jesus. You're not looking at the heart. My Lord, have mercy. It's in him we have a purpose set out to live a life of Christ full of purpose. Sorry, we're going back. They are seasonings that enhance the flavor of the food they have been sprinkled on. So when you season yourself with Jesus, he brings out so much more than you would if you were on your own. Let me say that again. So when you season yourself with Jesus, sprinkle a little bit on you, sprinkle a little bit of Jesus on you. He brings out so much more than you would if you were on your own. In football, of course I love football. A person who's been in the league for five or six years will always have his position established on the team. He's a first stringer. Jennifer goes, can you break that down for people that may not know? She's the only one that probably doesn't know. She's not a football fan. She's basketball all day long. Miami Heat, she'll tell you everybody in and out. But first stringer. Oftentimes, that player is referred to as a seasoned veteran. <laughs> Let me say that again now. He's always referred to as a seasoned veteran. Here's the tie-in. A coach will pair a rookie with a seasoned veteran to help him learn the ropes. Seasoning in this instant denotes experience with Jesus. The seasoned veteran has spent time walking with the coach, Jesus. He has an understanding of how he operates and a 
and to teach the rookie how to do the same thing and make room for him to excel. What I'm telling you is, accept the man or woman of God that has been placed in your life, that has been walking with the word, the word longer, in order for you to grab hold of what they've learned so you can apply it in your life. And the thing is, that's awesome. Not only will you apply it in your life, you'll get better at it. As they continue to lift you up, you'll walk it out with Jesus. You'll know more about Jesus, more about Jesus, more about Jesus, because you're walking it out with him. I'm walking with this seasoned veteran. He's going to show me what he learned to where I can not fall flat on my face. If I tell him anything different, that means I know more than him, and shame on me. It's crazy that this word is coming out tonight. Oh, my Lord. He is sent here to teach the rookie how to excel in his walk with God. How is the rookie going to tell Tom Brady how to play quarterback? You get what I'm saying? How can I do that? How can I tell? Okay, let me, let's go like this. Could Joshua tell Moses how to run Israel? Could Peter tell Jesus how to run things? <laughs> Y'all must be out of your mind. I must, I must be crazy telling you what to do. Come on. Have a... If I didn't have Jesus in my life, I wouldn't recognize the Jesus in him. It's not the Pastor Tony that I'm, I'm it's not Tony Samuels that I follow. It's Pastor Tony that I follow because he's a man of God. I see the Jesus in him, hear the Jesus in him, reach on to that Jesus in him, and I walk with the Jesus that is in him. I walk with you because the Jesus is in you. I walk with Brian because the Jesus is in you. I walk with Elliot because the Jesus is in him. Scott, I walk with you because the Jesus is in you. <laughs> Scott, you got it. Let me tell you something. Because he has so many tugs from so many different directions, but he decides to stay here. And he's stable. He's stable. Boy, he's hard-headed, but he's stable. I love him, though. That means whatever goes in is not going to come out, so we just need to keep feeding him Jesus, and it ain't going to come out. My God. I, I will be completely out of order or out of alignment if I try to take a hold of what this man has been given by God. And that's not just me. That's anybody out of order to this ministry. I had somebody tell me, he said, it's not the lighthouse, it's the people. I said, well, when they said that, that's when I knew my foot was in the door. You understand what I'm saying? Because that lie could not take hold of the truth that I was about to bring them. So they opened the door because they didn't have an answer. They just gave me an excuse. So I said, boom. The people are the lighthouse. The lighthouse are the people. You have an issue with the people at the lighthouse, meaning that you have an issue with the lighthouse, meaning you got an issue with God. You tell me, what are the people now? Uh, you call me when you're good, and that's it. I'm not here to tell you how to do it. I'm not here to spoon feed you. I can't tell you how to get back with Jesus. You got to get back with Jesus. You're the only one that knows how to walk with Jesus. Jesus won't correct you through me. He won't do that. He has a special time and a special way to teach you. He does. And if you know Jesus, he will teach you. 
He will allow that thing to happen. So I had a feeling on my heart about that person. And tell you something right now, in praise and worship tonight, I felt the Spirit was telling me there's somebody that feels some type of way about people. There's somebody in here that feels some type of way about people. Go to Jesus with it. Go to Jesus with it. Don't get any confirmation from a human. You don't need a, you need to go to Jesus with it. Go to Jesus. If you're looking for mom or dad to give you a yes or no answer, you're looking for the wrong thing. Go to Jesus with it. He'll straighten you out. It was in my spirit. I was up here. I was just like, oh, my God, I feel that somebody is just like, people are just, what's going on? Jennifer looks at me. She goes, it's going to be okay. I'm like, I'm good. I was like, I'm good. I'm good right now. Because I'm just hearing from the Lord that somebody here or some people here have some feeling about somebody. It's not a good feeling. And the thing is, he's like, they need to come to me. Point it out, but don't tell them how to take care of it. Just tell them to come to me. I'll show them. Seasoning brings out the hidden features in the food and the hidden or raw talent in the player. Seasoning brings out the hidden features in the food and the hidden or raw talent in the player. So when you season yourself, what's on the inside of you will come out more. So season yourself more with Jesus, and what's inside of you will start to manifest outside of you. And the thing is, nobody can take that away from you. I could care less about what anybody tries to tell you. No. I got Jesus on me. And let me tell you this. They were talking about the fire, right? We've been talking about fire constantly. And the Lord showed me that the three men that were thrown in the furnace, right? I, we've talked about this. They were safer in the furnace than outside of the furnace. Cool? But the thing is, the ones that tried to cause them harm, tried to come close to the furnace, ended up dying. So you are fire-filled. If anybody that tries to come up to you and try to harm you, guess what? God's going to take care of them. That fire is going to eliminate anything that tries to come harm to you. You notice that. It says, when they got close to the furnace, the men burned. Those were the men that tried to cause them harm. They burned, but those who were in the furnace stayed alive. So if, I'm going to tell you this right now. When you have Jesus in you, anybody that tries to come up against you can't do nothing to you because the fire of God is on you and they can't even touch you. If anybody, and the thing is, people are concerned with showing the fire of God in public because they're concerned with how people will look at them or portray. Why are we worried about the approval of man when the fire of God is on us? I don't need validation from man. I've been validated from God. And by his blood on the cross and on the third day he rose from the dead for me. I'm not worried about that thing. I'm going to act a fool in the car. I could care less. People at work, they'll sit there and just they'll drop, drop a curse word. And I'll say, praise the Lord. And they'll look at me. Thank you, Jesus. And I'll, I'll take another step. God is so good. I'll take another step. Thank you, Lord. And they'll look at me and go, oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then five seconds later, I'll go. And it's that spirit of God. It's that fire of God because I know Jesus because that's what I needed before I had that conversation. So before I went to work, I got with God. I got with Jesus. I need you. I need you. I need you. So when I go into work, Anybody that tries to come across this path has to know that he's standing on holy ground. If we are filled with fire, then we are walking in the holiness of God. I don't need anybody to tell me. God told me. And there are men of God and women of God that see it manifest in my life. 
I'm not made a minister because it's on credit. Oh, he's going to do good. No, I've been made the minister. We've been anointed pastors because of the things that we're doing good in our lives. These are seeds that have been sown forever in order for us to get into the position we are in. My God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the fire because you know what? I love you. I thank you, Jesus, for everything that you have done in our lives. My God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I should have kept that going on one of the longer drinks. God knows what's inside of you. He placed it there. In Jesus, we live in Christ. He lives in us. And in us, which brings out more of him in us. Let me say that again. In Jesus, we live in Christ, who lives in us. You hear it? Which brings out more of him that is in us. We... Mm -mm -mm. He brings out so much more than what you could do or ever try to produce on your own. Philippians 3, 7 through 8 in the Amplified. I mean, sorry, 7 through 11. Oh, I love this. But whatever former things were gains to me, as I thought then, that these things once regarded as advancements in merit. I'm going to go back so you can see that again. But whatever former things were gains to me as I thought then, as I thought then, these things once regarded as, as advancements in merit, I have come to consider a loss absolutely worthless for the sake of Christ and the purpose which he has given my life. But more than that, I count everything as loss. Let me tell you something. There are other translations that use, I count everything as dung or garbage compared to the priceless privilege and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. I don't need anything else but Jesus is what he's telling you. I can't be up here without clothes on, but I could care less about these clothes. I want Jesus. You guys get me? Anything else is dung, is lost compared to the priceless privilege and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord and of growing more deeply and thoroughly acquainted with him a joy unequaled for his sake I have lost everything and I consider it all so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him believing and relying on him not having any righteousness of my own derived from my obedience to the law and its rituals, but possessing that genuine righteousness which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. And this, so that I may know him experientially, my goodness, I said it, become more thoroughly acquainted with him, understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely. And in that same way, experience, the power of his resurrection, which overflows in his active in believers, and that I may share the fellowship of his sufferings by being continually conformed, inwardly in his likeness, even to his death, dying as he did. Amen? <laughs> Everything that I could bring to the table means absolutely nothing. Let me say that again. Everything that Matthew can bring to the table means absolutely nothing. I count it as rubbish. I count it as dung. Because I don't live in Matthew. I don't even live in Matthew's body because this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's not built by human hands. And the reason it is the temple of the Holy Spirit is because I live in him. I live in Jesus. You live in Jesus. Repeat after me. I live in Jesus. I live in Jesus. I don't live in me. I live in Jesus. If we can all just reflect back on where our lives would be without him.
how was it? <laughs> Maybe sweat some more. <laughs> if I can all go reflect back on where our lives would be without him, how was it? I was a person who was destroying everything I laid my hands on. Not only destroying, but also wandering aimlessly, lost, high, busted, disgusted, looking like Sideshow Bob. I'm for real. I had hair that only grew on the side of my head. Looking like a cartoon character. A straight up clown. You guys feel what I'm saying? Because I didn't have him in my life. I didn't have a purpose in my life. I didn't have Jesus in my life. I needed him. Lord, have mercy. An Egyptian sideshow Bob. First time ever. <laughs> now I'm living a life, and I was living a life, excuse me, without purpose. Now in him, I live in him. He is so necessary. He's so necessary in my life. I don't look like Sideshow Bob no more. You wouldn't have married me if I did. I love you. Let me tell you something. She has been placed in my life by God. She has been placed in my life by God. That's why I want to continue to be after him. Because if he placed her in my life and he's placed all you guys in my life, I can't wait to see the rest of the people that he's going to place in my life. This is just the beginning for us, guys. We're talking about expansion in the beginning of the year. If we want to expand more, we got to know Jesus more. And the more that we know Jesus, the more he's going to bring people in here to see Jesus. Repeat after me. In Jesus, I live. I need Jesus. Now look at your neighbors and say, neighbor, you live in Jesus. And you need Jesus. Say it again to them. You need Jesus. Say it's okay. All right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is still, we're, we're still living in him. We still got move and being. Lord, have mercy. I don't need anything else. I only need Jesus for he is the one. He is the one that's going to give me whatever I ask for in his name. With his promises of yes and amen. He is my Jehovah Shalom. He is my peace. He is my Jehovah Nisi. He is my banner on the top of the mountain of victory. He is my Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. He is the bomb of Gilead. He is the rose of Sharon. He is my wonderful counselor. He is my mighty God, my everlasting father. He is my prince of peace. And he is the one that takes me to the top of the mountaintops and navigates me through the valleys. He is the one who shows who I am in him, not who I am in me. He's the one that navigates me through the valleys. He's the one who shows me who I am in him, not who I am in you. Or anybody else, not even myself. Please don't take that the wrong way. I just need Jesus. That's all I need. He is the one that saved me from heroin and cocaine. He is the one that pulled me from the streets. He is the one that saved me from myself. He is the one that shows me the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Because he is my blessed assurance. He is my father, and I am his son with a little s. He is my groom and I am his bride. He has shown me what we are able to do with him. No matter what we can, we can do all things through Jesus. Now, in him we move. Now, every day, 24-7, 365. Whether physical movement or spiritual movement, even on holidays. As believers, everything that is set in motion is in Jesus. It says, in him we move. There's no deviation from that. 
Holy Lord, here come the toes. Get up in the morning, in him. Make breakfast, in him. Work, school, class, whatever, in him. Have lunch, in him. Have fellowship, with him. Chores, in him. We move, in him. Every single thing. I could care less about what anybody else got to do. When I'm in the car, thank you, Lord. Got to start the car. Drive a standard in traffic. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Getting behind people doing 35 in the left lane. Lord, Jesus, help me. Help me. You know what my reason is for that? It's because nobody else has a sense of urgency. I'm the only one on the road that has a sense of urgency. And that's the only one I can know is because Jesus told me that. Yeah, you're good. You're good. No, he did not. He said, man, calm down, bro. That's what Jesus said. He said, calm down. You driving that four-cylinder Toyota Corolla like it's, like, like it's a Ferrari. Why are you hitting that gas in that clutch? And I'm only doing seven miles per hour. I need to work on it. I know. I know. Praise the Lord, I'm working on it. As long as I am in him, I'm going to work on it. As long as I am moving in that vehicle, I'm going to ask Jesus to help me. Don't mean mug that old lady. All right, yes, Lord. Every time. And Jennifer checks me. Proverbs 3, 6, please. In all your ways... In him we move. In him we move. If you do not acknowledge him in all your ways, then you are not moving in him. Silence. Trust me, this word isn't just for y'all. This was for me, boy. If I do not acknowledge him in all my ways, I cannot move in him. And he shall direct your paths. So when we move in him, it should be effortless. When you are having to work, strive, manipulate, you are no longer moving in him. In the Old Testament, turn with me to Joshua 3. And we'll start at verse 2. By the way, John, Christian, you guys are doing awesome. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp. Giving orders to the people, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God, and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Wait, don't go anywhere yet. Go to three. Giving orders to the people, when you see the Ark of the Covenant, when you see the presence of God, and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. There's order. Keep going. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves. I'm going to say this again. Jesus told the people, you can say it like that. I'm going to say it like this. Because if he's the vision of this ministry, Pastor Tony told the people, consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. You see how the word was edifying? But first you've got to do something in order for you to receive the edification. You've got to consecrate yourselves. Joshua said to the priests, take up the ark of the covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all of Israel so that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the end of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go back to three, two, three, and four, sorry. Joshua, the man of God, received a word to move in him <laughs> with the Ark of the Covenant, which is the presence of God. In the Old Testament, it was the Levitical priests, the seasoned veterans, who are able to carry the presence of God. Now that we are in him, in Jesus, 
We are a royal priesthood. We are able to move with the presence of God wherever we go. But we must consecrate ourselves in order for us to move in him. There must be a specific thing that we must do to remove whatever is keeping us from the glory of God. If we are a royal priesthood, identify yourself as a royal priest. He says it in his word, you are a royal priesthood. That movement could not take place until you consecrate yourself. For you to move in him, you must listen to the man of God first because there's a proper order, there's a proper authority in order for you to move. If you move too soon outside of the authority, trust me, the presence of God will not move with you. It'll kill you. So much conviction, it'll kill you. Don't forget, we will only be able to move with the glory of God if only we are in proper alignment and in proper order under spiritual authority. Jesus dictates to your spirit, your spirit dictates to your soul, and your soul dictates to your body. There can only be movement in him if proper alignment is in place. It says it right there. We have to be right with God, and not only God, we have to be right with the man of God that has been sent into your life. You can't jump ship too early. Because if the captain don't know, he cannot throw you a lifesaver. You'll drown. You might get it right. It's great. I've heard things like, so I've heard things like, you know, I wanted to leave because God said that she was for me. Or God said that he was for me. This, that, and the third. God will not put a person like that in your life before Jesus Christ. So I don't want to ever hear anybody tell me, God said that she was for me. Nope, Jesus, God said, Jesus is for you. Wait and let me show you in a little bit, but you ain't right yet. God will not put anything that will tempt you out of the order of God. He won't. It's unacceptable for God to put somebody in front of the person of Jesus in your life. It's not true. He won't. So in, for you to be in perfect order and you listening to the man of God, it has to be perfect authority sent by God through the man of God. Then you'll receive it. Then you can move. Outside of that, wait. What you got to lose? Absolutely nothing. You have nothing to lose. What are we to gain if we were to leave the process of God? Absolutely nothing. When I was out of alignment, I was the one doing the moving. I was basically telling God I knew more than him. Anybody feel the same way sometimes? I'll say that again. When I was out of alignment, I was the one doing the moving. I was basically telling God I knew more than him. I was directing God that he moved in me. I worshiped myself. And my movement indicated that. I was more concerned with what I can do and not truly understanding that when it's movement in him, I am able to move mountains, not create them. I'm going to say that again because everybody needs to hear this and take heed to this. We start, I'm going to tell you this right now, don't take this the wrong way. People tend to move too soon. People tend to move out of the order of God. And when you do that, you create a mountain that you can't even surpass. And once you can't reach it, guess what? You got to get high enough. To get over it. Y'all catch what I'm saying? You got to bring that back into your life in order for you to get over it. I hate to say that. But that's the thing. You go back to the thing that you think is going to cope with your responsibilities. And that's the thing. When I was out of alignment, guess what I was doing? I was getting high. I didn't have to deal with my responsibilities. I didn't have to go through anything. Why? Because I was just smoking my way up over the mountain. 
问嘛？我我我，问嘛 ？Okay, no. I'm stepping over things that didn't even exist. I'm serious now. I'm serious. That's how out of my mind I was. Because I didn't have God to move with me, I didn't have Jesus in my life. So I thought I was my own God, worshiping myself and worshiping the poison I was putting in my body. But thank thanks be to Jesus, we don't live like that no more, girl. We don't live like that no more. Hallelujah! Yeah! Now with Jesus, I can say, "Hey, Jesus, I'll take care of the mountain, son. Don't worry about it. I got you." God, he's so good. He's so good. He's so good. I ain't got to be sick no more every morning. Oh my goodness gracious, thank you, Lord. He's so good. And I'm gonna tell you this right now. I worship myself. My movement indicated that I was more concerned with what I could do, and not truly understanding that when it was movement in Him. I'm gonna say this again. I'm able to move mountains, not create them. So Jennifer and I, we received a word when Bishop Bonda was here. Let me tell you this: I know people are gonna sit there and continuously talk about Bishop Bonda. That man right there, and what we brought that weekend. I got a word from him. It was two words: no limitations. That one hit me. That one hit me so hard. Me and Jennifer, I'm gonna tell you this. I won't speak for her. me. I have a problem, and I've spoke to I spoke to my brothers and my sisters about it. I have a little issue with perfectionism. Okay, I, re, I I remove it from me. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I'm working on it. Okay, I'm telling you this right now. I'll be straight up with you guys, right? Because before we leave the house, the dishes got to be done, the furniture's got to be straightened up, everything's got to be right. And guess what? Me and Jennifer coming is 10:48. Service started at 10 o'clock. That's real. I'm being straight up. I gotta be I, I gotta be transparent with y'all. That's why I got this. So, Bishop Bonda said no limitations. So, Sunday, when Bishop Bonda was here, we had the word and we didn't leave here until like 3:50. You guys remember that Sunday? It was wonderful. It was unbelievable that Sunday. We were all levitating and we didn't even notice it. <laughs> For real. We were all like. You know in the movies where the people just move really fast and it looks like they're on a conveyor belt, you know what I mean? Oh. Like that butler on Mr. Deeds. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know those hands? You guys know exactly how it felt. Because when we all walked out of here, even it being 3.30, we're all like this. <sighs> That's the power of God. That's Jesus. Yes! Right? We weren't like, oh my God, it's 3.30, what are we going to do? No, we were all like, it was great. We wanted to talk some more. We stood here for about another half hour. Talk for Bishop. We wanted pictures with everybody. I wanted to take a picture with the pulpit. Huh? We were so happy. We were so joyful, weren't we? How amazing it was, right? Instantly, the enemy came against me when I walked out that door, and he said, oh, my God, you have a lot to do, Matthew. <laughs> the enemy tried to steal that word instantly. He did. He tried to steal that joy instantly. He's like, you got so much to do. You got the lunches to make for all the kids. You got to make the beds because you couldn't do it in the morning because you were rushing here. You guys got to get ready. You got to get the blankets and the sheets. You got to do the laundry. Oh, and guess what? You still have to go grocery shopping. Yep. Grocery shopping on a Sunday at Walmart is the worst thing you could ever do in your entire life. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have this whole entire list, and at the same time, my favorite football team is playing. But that didn't matter. That didn't matter, right? So let me tell you this. We gave our day to the Lord. He reciprocated it right back to us. Let me tell you something. 
the things that would have taken us four or five or six hours to do, because it's an entire, it took us two and a half hours to knock out. And that was me moving in him, not me moving on Matthew's time. I was more concerned with what I could bring to the table when not knowing that if I were to just stay with the one who is the maker of time, I'd be good to go. And he did that. And when he said no limitations, I said, I said, Booby, no limitations. We knocked it out. And we were able to go to sleep at a decent time. And I got to watch the second half of the football game. Hey! But I'm telling you, that's how God works. God works that way. If you just give him the thing that you really think you need to bring to the table, he will take care of it far more than you could. Mm. It's the hardest thing to sacrifice what you think you have control of. Because if it's in him and we move, he's directed all of our paths. We don't need to direct nothing. How can there be two conductors? <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pride will create a stumbling block for you if you let it. Examples of this are people leaving the faith home, the ministry, the church, and taking people with them, knowing darn well they were supposed to stay. But it's okay come back and move with Jesus. Leaving a spiritual covering because they are not moving in him, but they are being moved by their emotions. Without him, in a car, if I'm in a car, right, I'm in the neutral. I spoke this a little ago. Without him, I am a car that's in neutral. I feel like it. When I am at the stoplight while in neutral, I start to slowly creep backwards. Without him, I am a car in neutral. When I am at a stoplight while in neutral, I start to slowly creep back. When the car is in gear, I move forward. God is the gear. Jesus is the clutch. And the Holy Spirit is the gas. Those three are the three key components to progressing forward. If any one of these components is missing, then the car will stall. You are the car. Without God, without Jesus, without the Holy Spirit, you'll stall. And as you're stalled at that light, guess what? Other cars are passing you by. Stuck in neutral having to ignite yourself back up. <laughs> that spoke to me big time because I would try to think that I could accelerate without God or I could accelerate without Jesus or I can move without the Holy Spirit because if I could do those things, then in him, I don't need. I need Jesus. Necessary fellowship. It is ridiculously necessary. When it feels hard, when you get tired, you need Jesus. I don't need canteen. I need Jesus. I don't need sleep. I need Jesus. We will need a shower, but you still need Jesus. I'm serious. But don't, don't get me wrong. He'll accept you just as you are. He will love you. He'll take care of you. Mm -mm -mm. If we move, sorry, sorry, sorry. If any one of these components is missing, the car would stall. So in him, we have our being. Being is the existence, the nature, or essence of a person. So in him, we have our existence. He gives us our identity, our purpose, our assignment, our testimony, if we move before God, gives us the grace, then we walk right out of the will of God 
and our testimony loses its value and becomes nothing more than a war story. If we are not in the will of God, we are relating to the old man. The Bible says all things have passed away. And something that has passed away no longer exists. 2 Corinthians 5.17, the Bible says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, in Christ, in him, He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm not high no more. I'm high on the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I walk on water now because I walk hand in hand with Jesus. He makes the impossible practical. Therefore, no, sorry. We are new creations, fearfully and wonderfully made in Jesus. We are chosen royal priesthood in Jesus. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am above and never beneath. I am the head and not the tail in him, in Jesus. John 15, 5 says, I am the, bran I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in, and I in him, bears much fruit. I'm going to go back to that. He who abides in, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Anything else? We got to talk about this some more. I want to let you guys know that you guys are in Christ Jesus, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to walk with you, to talk with you, to love with you, to walk with you, to talk with you, and see us as new creations. You are no more old men. You are new creations in Christ Jesus. Walk this thing out. Walk this thing out in Christ. Always need him. He's necessary. Amen? Amen. I want to do an altar call. Um. And if those things about the validation, about moving too soon, about trying to do things on your own, working yourself to where you're exhausted because you're working so much in the physical, you haven't approached Jesus to help you in the spiritual. Anybody that wants to come up here and get some of this, come up here and get some prayer. We're going to do an altar call. John's going to play that for us, please. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Powerful word, Matt. Powerful word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Get God some praise for tonight's word. Amen. In him. We move in him and we have our being. Amen. Let's go work that thing tomorrow. Hallelujah. Before we leave, does anybody need to find out who this Jesus is? Is everybody in here saved? I think I know everybody in here. Everybody saved? Hallelujah. All right. Anybody need to rededicate their life? We can come up here and pray also before you guys leave. Please don't let that slip by. Amen. Hallelujah. It's been a powerful night. Amen. Don't forget our banquet is the 21st of October. Our 70th year, we got raffle tickets on the way out. If you want to participate in that, the number is going up. Amen. Don't forget our food truck also. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that food truck. I've been on vacation for two weeks. Hallelujah. All right. Stand up, everybody. You know, in Jesus, he promised you some sweet sleep too, right? Hey, receive that. Amen. Raise your hands to the Lord. Father God, I thank you so much, Lord, for this powerful word tonight, God. I thank you so much for drawing us near to you and allowing us to live in Christ. We find our identity. We find our being in you, Father God. Show us 
how to work that word tomorrow as we leave, that we can do nothing without you, Father. But with you, all things are possible, Lord. In Jesus' name, Ephesians 3.20. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think, according to the power, the, I was about to say the, the gas. I was thinking of that car analogy, amen. I was just thinking that. Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord. Have a good night, Lighthouse.